Hi, Max Brantley with the Arkansas Times on Wednesday, October the 12th. Let's start with state capital news. They're still fighting at the Capitol over what's going to come first, tax cuts or kids. That is, the governor of Arkansas and lots of legislative leaders want to begin the talks about the next year's budget. We're talking about a big income tax cut first. Some other legislators, and I think a, a Democratic caucus, particularly with strong numbers on the House Education Committee, is saying we ought to look at some unmet needs in education first, even if that takes some money out of the pot available for tax cuts. Particularly, the issue is $20 million in special education spending that would bring spending up to the level that the schools need. The leadership on the Republican side has been trying to get that money taken out after a committee voted to get it put into the budget. It remains to be seen what's going to happen on that. The, there's a legislative leader who loves tax cuts who says he wants to not reduce the final penny on the state tax on groceries and instead put that into income tax cutting happily. Some, some Republican leadership such as Senator Jonathan Dismang says he doesn't think that's a starter. We'll have to see. Another report that could mean money out of the state capitol yesterday, and that was about our foster care system in Arkansas. It remains in crisis. We're adding more children to the system. More children will be taken out of their homes and placed into foster care rather than in a situation where they can work it out within the family. There's a lot yet to be learned about whether we're handling these cases properly, but it's pretty clear we don't have enough caseworkers, we don't have enough experienced caseworkers, and we don't pay caseworkers enough to stick the course and do the work that's needed. This ultimately is a money issue no matter what people say about the ins and outs of DHS and the courts and how they handle cases of suspected child abuse and neglect. Elsewhere at the Capitol today, a committee was meeting on where to place some proposed monuments on the Capitol grounds. They heard from the Ten Commandments monument people. They heard from Lucian Greaves of the Satanic Temple who wants to put a Hindu statue on the grounds. They talked a little bit about a wall monument that would signify the separation between church and state. I think this is all theater after a fashion that the, the plan will be for the Secretary of State and the Republican legislature to approve a spot for the uh, Ten Commandments monument and not anything else, and then we'll have our lawsuit. But in the meanwhile, some interesting things are said about the historic background of a need, for example, for a satanic temple monument as, as an answer to those who want to place religion in a, in a monument on the state capitol grounds. This afternoon at AETN, we're going to finally get a debate between U.S. Senate candidates. Connor Eldridge, the Democrat, and John Bozeman, the Republican. I hope John Bozeman will finally be asked to explain about his position on Donald Trump, how he'd like to punch Donald Trump for talking about sexually assaulting women, but why he still will vote for him despite that point of view. Uh, also on, on the political agenda today, it was a plea bargain yesterday in Faulkner County. The Faulkner County clerk, Margaret Darter, pleaded guilty to misdemeanor for falsifying county records, that is, campaign financial statements filed by other public officials. She did it as a favor to them so they wouldn't be found in violation of state ethics laws. Well, she left her office for the rest of this year, but she's running again next year, and so the question Will people of Faulkner County elect a dishonest county clerk to office again? She has an opponent, a Democrat, but uh, Darter's a Republican in a growing Republican county. She got her plea bargain at the, at the, with the help of a Republican prosecuting attorney. The local Republican prosecuting attorney has no opinion on whether Darter should serve again. He says that's up to the people of Faulkner County. Indeed it is, and I'm afraid that they, they may vote in that like they're likely to vote in the Trump-Clinton presidential race. Uh, medical marijuana is on, on the agenda today. The Arkansas Advocates for Children and Families and the Arkansas Chapter of the American Pediatrics Association said they're both against the medical marijuana proposals because they, they have potential harm for children. They said it with some regret. They acknowledge that marijuana has proved useful in treating epileptic seizures among children, but they don't think the research is there yet to allow medical marijuana to be available in Arkansas. They have pointedly avoided joining the coalition against these amendments that the Chamber of Commerce and others are part of. They wanted to focus just on the health issue. It was a disappointment to some who, who generally support these institutions. Some pediatricians I know are going to depart from their, their association and vote for these amendments because they're aware of the, the benefits that marijuana can bring. Some good reading for you today on the Arkansas blog. One is a reference to Frank Bruni, the New York Times columnist, who got tired, as I have, of hearing Republican politicians, particularly those in Arkansas, talk about how they are fathers of daughters and they have wives and they have sisters and, and that's why they don't like what Donald Trump said. This is of course paternalistic claptrap. Any human being should be offended at what Donald Trump said about abusing women. It doesn't take having a woman in your family to think so. In fact, it tends to take a, a very paternalistic view of women to say that and I was glad to see Frank Bruni say it. Ernest Dumas has a great column that's posted online today on the Arkansas blog, Vote Against Issue 3. 
This is style as an economic development issue, as he explains in great detail. It's nothing but a handout of taxpayer money to, to corporate citizens, to corporate lobbyists, and it opens the state treasury to an unlimited amount of lending of state money to private business with potentially drastic consequences if, if bad things were to happen on some of these business ventures. Take a look. Finally, uh, after yesterday's recording, yes, the Broadway Bridge did fall down. It was blown up at 10 a.m., but it didn't fall. Five hours later, with the help of some cable tugging from a towboat on the river, it did finally fall. There's a big mess in the river channel today, an awful big pile of steel. It's slow going, getting it cleared, but they think they can get the job done. Meanwhile, Arkansas engineering feats uh, made worldwide, at world, worldwide attention in newspapers and TVs all over the world. Another proud day for Arkansas. I'm Max Brantley. I'll be back tomorrow.